Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,795. Be prepared to be inspired. Let's turn the key. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. I'm in Bountiful, Utah, beautiful place, with a very special guest by the name of Frank Finelli. Hey, Frank, welcome to Cars Yeah. Do you have it in gear, and are you ready to release the clutch? Mark, I got this thing pegged at 6,000. I'm ready to dump it. Let's go. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, hold on, baby. Put the seatbelt okay, okay. on. Well, this this is cool. We're going to have some fun today. But before I give you a proper introduction, would you share one little thing most people maybe don't know about you? You know, it was pretty hard for me to try and think of an answer to this one because there's quite a few of them. But I think, <laughs> I think a really good one would be before I moved out here, I was living for a short time in upstate New York. And I tapped my own maple trees on my property and made my own homemade maple syrup. So even though I'm a, a Long Island kind of suburb city kid, I kind of learned how to live a little country before moving out here and I made my own syrup. So that was kind of fun. Well, that's cool. You have to send me a bottle of that. If you still have any left over, I love maple syrup. And I, I have a recipe that I make, uh, used to make for my kids called race cakes. They're homemade pancakes. I even have them posted out there on the Car Shop blog. But I love maple syrup on those. And nothing better than uh, fresh mm. maple syrup. My next door neighbor has a maple tree and he did that. I don't even know what kind mm. it was. And I said, what are you doing to your tree? And he goes, oh, I'm going to try to make some syrup. And actually stuff came out. It was kind of, I don't think it was the right kind of maple tree. It was a little bit odd tasting, but uh, it was sweet. So that's cool. <laughs> hey, that's Oh yeah. Thank you. All right. Well, when we get together, we'll have to have some pancakes and custom maple syrup from uh, Frank Fennell. I, I like your last name. That would be a good like Italian maple syrup. Fennelli. Fennelli's maple hey. syrup. Sounds, sounds good. I would have to agree with you. Thank you. I think <laughs> do that. All right. I've already got the whole bottle design. I've got everything figured out for you. Yeah, it'll be That's cool. It. Yeah, with a nice car theme. <laughs> there we go. Well, let me give you a proper introduction. Frank Finelli won a bitchin' boot camp that landed him a job at Dave Kindig's shop, Kindig It Design, and so started his career in the automotive industry. Originally from Long Island, New York, where he was tapping trees, <laughs> where he worked <laughs> on cars with his Uncle Joe. While on active duty in the Army, and by the way, thank you for your service. I really appreciate that. Well, thank you. You're welcome. He started working on his own restorations and he restored multiple vehicles, the current being a 1969 Plymouth Roadrunner. Cool. Since he was a kid, he loved the chase, buying a project and seeing it to completion. Today, Frank still serves in the United States Army Reserve. All right. Good job, buddy. I appreciate that too. While honing his craft in the body shop. We'll be back in just a minute to talk with Frank a little bit more about what he's up to, but first a word from our valued sponsors. They keep this show on the air so give them a listen and we'll be right back dump the clutch love it are you ready to get out and hit the road boy i sure am this country has so much to offer and what better way than to get out and drive Covercraft protects the things that move you from protective covers for the outside of your vehicles to the inside with dash covers seat covers and sunscreens all creatively designed to keep your vehicle cool for those roadside stops for a meal or to take in the view. Covercraft custom tailors their designs for your special vehicles and manufactures with the quality and attention to detail that's been their standard since 1965. Road trips can be hard on your vehicle surfaces, so protect them, and when you get home, cleanup is fast and easy. And you want to get a deal? Well, I've got one just for you. Use the code YA21 at Covercraft.com and you'll get 10% off your Covercraft order. That's right, 10% off compliments of cars, yeah. Simply use the code YEAH21, YA21, at checkout. I've been protecting my vehicles with Covercraft covers since 1975. Covercraft, protecting the things that move you. Go to Covercraft.com today. I was talking with a buddy of mine the other day and he asked me about American Collectors Insurance. He said, 
While I listen to you on Cars Yeah, you're always talking about agreed value collector car insurance. Well, I insure all my cars on my regular auto insurance policy, and I've done it for years. Why use a different company for my collector cars? I get a multi-car discount. Isn't that good enough? I suggested he call his carrier and ask how much he would get if his collector car was totaled or stolen. He called back and said, boy, that was a scary conversation. Their value of my car wasn't even close to what it's really worth. Thank you for the education, Mark. So don't just hope for a fair claim settlement. Be certain and know exactly what you receive with an agreed value policy. American Collectors Insurance has been protecting enthusiasts since 1976. Give them a call today for your personal agreed value quote at 866-ACI-YEAH. That's 866 866- 224-9324. Tell them you're a friend of Mark Green's at Cars Yeah. American Collectors Insurance, classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors, automotive enthusiasts just like you and me. They're the ones that insure my car. That's American Collectors Insurance. All right, Frank, we are back. So let's go a little deeper into the corner now that we're flying down the road here. I'd love for you to share more about what you're doing today, the fun that you're having, the role that you play. It's a nice way to get the inspirational tires smoking, which sounds like something you like to do. So, Frank, take the wheel. Uh, yeah, so day in and day out, I like you said, I work at Can Dig It Now, which is a real dream come true. You know, I had spent the majority of my adult life in the military or working in some facet of the military, either on action duty or in the reserves and then working out of college and doing cars on my own free time and never really thought I was capable or ready to work in the automotive industry professionally. So now it's kind of wild to kind of flip the role where now I'm doing this full time and the army's kind of my side thing. So yeah, I, day in and day out, I'm I'm working over at Can Dig It. I do a number of jobs there. I've done metal fabrication. They've taught me how to CNC their patented door handles. I do body work in the body shop. They've also recently started to let me get in the paint booth a little bit with painting some small parts. I've primed a lot of vehicles. So I'm kind of like a, a little bit of a multi-tool in the shop, I guess. And it's it's really fun, which that allows me to, to do a number of jobs there and kind of keep it interesting for me and, and bounce around and hone my skills, which plays into what I personally love. I, I've been addicted to cars since I was a kid. And I've always wanted to build muscle cars and hot rods. And so, you know, in my free time, when I'm not too exhausted after working a long day, I'll come home and I'll work on that Roadrunner or my own stuff. And my girlfriend's got a bunch of really cool cars and trucks too. So we'll work on those together on the weekends. And it's just, it just kind of feeds into everything. You know, I just love, I'm passionate about cars, just like probably you and everyone listening here. It's cars is just, our thing. So it just wants to, it's something I just want to keep building on and just doing out of pure love for it, not because anyone's forcing me to do it. Frank, you jumped into the deep end, my friend. My goodness. I mean, I it, did. It, Dave can dig a shot. Now, Dave is a guest on the show. He's such an awesome guy. He was a great guest. You listeners can go back and listen to my talk with him. Of course, you already know him. I mean, he's a TV guy, builds incredible stuff. I got to spend a weekend with him in Costa Mesa at, the, at a plastic car show I was emceeing, and I got to interview him Interview him live up on the stage as well, which is cool. He's just such a nice guy. And to get to start your career off in that environment, a top stellar, well-known environment, you must pinch yourself every day going, how did I get here? So talk a little bit about how did you get there? It's a wild story, Mark. I still don't even believe it, to be honest. Because <laughs> It all started fall of 2000, what has it been, 19. So I was living in upstate New York, tapping those maple trees and working on my own stuff after work like I always did. And in the years prior, I had started restoring cars in North Carolina when I was in the Army and posting little videos and pictures on Instagram. And I gained a bit of a following just through my videos and just reaching out to people and or people reaching out to me and vice versa over those like four or five years. And then I guess just through the the little platform I developed and the connections I made with people on social media, I was reached out to by a, a casting director looking to recruit people for the show that was coming out called Bitchin' Boot Camp. And you know, you hear about things like this. And of course, if you're in the car community, you know about bitch and rides and can dig a design. And it just sounded too good to be true. So I got the email. It's like, there's no way I'm ever going to even get selected for this. You know, they wanted a tryout video. They wanted me to send in a bunch of pictures of the stuff I worked on. My garage was a mess at the time. I just felt like I wasn't even ready to like make a video or I wasn't prepared to 
present myself for this? And was I going to make all this effort for nothing? And I was kind of not even going to go for it. My mom, my brother, and my sister, they were adamant. They're like, no, you have to try out for it. You have to to put your hat, you know, put your name in the hat because you never know. And I was like, all right, all right, I'll give it a shot. So I made the video just in one cut, just spoke off the cuff, just showed my cars and everything. And the next thing I knew, a few weeks later, I was reached out to by, I was contacted by the people making the show saying, hey, you've, you're selected as one of the, the finalists to come on the show. And wow. I was, yeah, it was amazing. I didn't <laughs> think I even had a chance. I figured maybe they'd use like my video as a clip and, you know, the reels of people who tried out or something. But next thing I knew, I was flying out to Salt Lake City, Utah, which is a place I've never been to. And honestly, I was ignorant to how cool and beautiful this place was. So I was here in Salt Lake. And all of a sudden, I was with all these other people who were in the cars and, you know, surrounded by all this cool stuff. And just it was wild. And I was like, all right, well, maybe I'll make it through an episode and I'll get kicked out first. But at least I can tell my grandkids, like, I was on this thing. I one almost time. made it when I was a youngster. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it, it's still a cool story no matter what happened. I was like, it, sure. it just made me feel inspired. Like I was recognized for, for what I did on my own. And then after each passing challenge, I just remained there and I kept get. I won a few challenges. I won a couple individual and team ones. And I, I still was just, I went there with the mentality of I'm just going to have fun with this. I'm going to do my best. And that's what it's going to be. And whether I'm meant to be out in the first, you know, the first challenge or the last one, it is what it is. And I'm just going to enjoy it. So lo and behold, I wound up winning the show. And it was the biggest thing that ever happened to me because it just changed the whole course of my life. And wow. next thing I knew, I, I flew back to New York. I finished, I had to finish flooring my house and painting and a bunch of things I was doing. So this way I could sell it and have it presentable. So I spent about a next, the next month finishing my house up and kind of getting it ready. And then I have a, a number of cars and trucks and vehicles I own. So I had to figure out how I was going to get those across country. But for the meantime, I just loaded up every tool I owned and some of my clothing into my Mustang and drove that <laughs> car across country in the end of February, beginning of March and got caught in a nasty snowstorm coming through Wyoming and had a it was just a, a wild adventure. Yeah. And I arrived almost a year ago, just barely a year ago to date. It was March 3rd of last year, 2020, that first day. I arrived that night, and the next morning I started working there, and I've been been punching away there ever since, and it's been really cool. It's an awesome story, and, you know, testament here to your mom. Always listen to your mom. Do what your mom says, because she always knows, right? She, yeah. yeah, she said, do it, and you did it. You know, this is a great story, because so many times people miss opportunities through either fear or, like you say, going, oh, they'll never pick me. Why bother? Mm -hmm. take, a, take a chance. Get out of your comfort zone. If somebody offers you an opportunity, even if you have no clue how you're going to do it, take it and figure out later. My listeners have heard this before. Sir Richard Branson, he's kind of a popular, successful guy, right? Virgin Record, Virgin Airlines. Mm -hmm. That's his quote. If someone offers you an opportunity to do something, say yes and figure out how to do it later. Don't worry about it. Just yeah. do it. And that's what you did. So kudos to you. So let me have you talk about what's your favorite thing about what you do in the shop right now? Sounds like they're letting you do a lot of different things, but do you have one thing that you're kind of leaning towards? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm kind of getting to do it now, which is super cool. For me, the most satisfying thing about building cars is painting. For me personally, that's like, I mean, obviously, for anyone, even if you don't work on cars, you know, that's the moment where you see the car kind of being what it will be. But I love watching paint go down on a panel or a part and just seeing kind of that completion moment of the car coming to life. Mm -hmm. So that's always been my favorite part about any of my personal builds and now I'm getting um, trained by one of the guys there and I'm learning how to more advanced techniques and and uh, ways of painting and doing it the right way to be at the Kandiga design level, which, you know, if, like I said, I got to paint a few small parts and smaller things lately. If I get to do more than that, I'd be beyond happy if I even just stay doing small stuff. I'm still happy. I've gotten to to prime vehicles when we're, you know, doing our bodywork process, which is a form of painting, too. And that's so that. Yeah, that is definitely my most cherished thing I get to do is getting in the booth and cool. getting suited up and painting stuff. I love that. Yeah. Well, I've no doubt you're going to be painting a car one day and uh, off you'll go. That's very cool. And again, well, getting to you. work in a shop like that, top level stuff, cool stuff and be around that talent. It's like an MBA. I mean, you're getting paid to have an MBA and it's uh, what better way to chase your passion than the way you've had the fortune, the good fortune and the skill set to be able to do it. Let me ask you what your 
driving inspiration is. Has there been a key mentor in your life, someone who's been an advisor to you that has been very influential and helped you move through your career so far? Yeah, I mean, I've got to say I have two of them. My Uncle Joe, when I was a kid, he's the one that got me going with learning how to work on cars. So I couldn't put Matchbox cars down when I was a kid. I just had them on my walls. It was just everything was cars for me. And he had this really cool, he still has it. It's a 57 Chevy Bel Air he did when he was in his 20s and lived around the corner and I'd go around and drool over it. And, you know, when he'd be tinkering on it and he'd kind of just let me start working on it with him here and there and just teaching me the basics, the foundations of safety with, you know, how to jack up a car, how to take a wheel off, just the simple stuff that a kid would need to know to, to go from there. And I just kind of learned how to do a bunch of things, even with some, uh, even to get to do a little bit of priming with him once and a little bit of painting and just the initial start of kind of where it was and kind of sprung me off from there. And then I took the wheel on my own when I was in North Carolina. And then, you know, between my mom and my girlfriend, Alex, just both of them always just pushing me with everything that I do. And they've always got my back. Like I said, when it came to getting me on the show and then now here with living with my girlfriend and just day in and day out, have getting to tell her what I work on. It's just, it's really fun. And like I said, she's got a bunch of cars and trucks too. So she actually, understands what I'm doing. And it, I don't know, I just have great people in my family and in my life that just kind of support and kind of, we just build off of each other's passion for cars. So it's, awesome. it's really cool. Yeah. Very fortunate. If a young person was to come to you and say, how do I get into this passionate field? I mean, I love cars. How do I do it? What's maybe a word of it, why, of wisdom or advice you might offer them? I would say it's kind of like that quote you're mentioning before. You just kind of you just have to dive into it. And though that might just sound like I'm breaking down something really complex into being simple, it's sort of what I did too. Like I, I bought a 78 Camaro when I was 24 on my own. And like I said, I knew some basics from my uncle, but I certainly hadn't done a ground up build by myself yet. And I just sort of used a little bit of phone calls to him, YouTube, and then just trial and error of just working on it on my own. And I mean, yeah, it, it takes a little bit of You've got to have some tools and space to work on it, some money. So it's it's not the the simplest thing to get into. But even I would say if you didn't have the opportunity for that, maybe if you know of a friend or someone that has a car or, you know, there's a number of ways that you could probably volunteer to help someone work on their car and kind of become mentored by someone that knows what they're doing. But really, honestly, it's it's not working on cars isn't really hard. It's just it takes time to to develop those skills and, and learn it. And you, you'll find out the more that you work on them the easier it becomes. And it's just like anything else in life. So yeah, it's just really, if you're into it and you love cars, start somewhere, just pick something small about it and learn from that. And just, it builds and it goes. Absolutely. You know, you said something there that's really valuable too. donate your time. I mean, find a great shop and offer to go in and work certain hours during the week for free. Even if you're sweeping the floor, just to be around it and to look at it and start to ask people questions, express mm -hmm. interest, people will start to pull you in. Car people love to share what they're doing with others. I know mm -hmm. a lot of people, young people that have started that way in shops. So uh, yeah, you might have to do it for free for a while or work for very small wage, but think of it as schooling and make sure you're in a shop that is good and reputable and you appreciate the quality work they're doing so that you can learn from the best. Excellent advice you've offered there. Let's take a short break and thank our sponsors. We come back. I have a bit of a challenge question for you, Frank. So keep the seatbelts on. All right. I've discovered Linkage. It's a new quarterly publication and website that covers the automotive market, driving, restoring, collecting, and discovering your passion for motor vehicles. Linkage is about experiences, opinions, and values. Linkage is an actual, informed, reasoned opinion based on first-hand experiences. A talented Linkage team covers the automotive world, the people who share your passion and mine, smart, considered, rational, and experienced opinions, ones you can learn from and grow. That includes our passion that drives auctions and the collector car market. So come with me and join us on this journey join Linkage. Linkage, geared for the automotive life. Subscribe today at LinkageMag.com. And make sure while you're there to use the code cars yeah to get $10 off your annual subscription. What a deal. Did you know that Cars yeah is in the top 1% of all podcasts based on listenership according to Lipson? 
the premier RSS feed for podcasts in the United States. That's right. And Cars Yeah! is the only five-day-a-week automotive-focused podcast for you to get your message into the ears of thousands of listeners daily from all over the world. Plus, DuPont Registry recommended Cars Yeah! is one of their top 10 car podcasts for you to enjoy. Cars Yeah! has experienced tremendous growth, plus your ads are evergreen, meaning they never go away. And more and more listeners find Cars Yeah! every day for their daily dose of automotive inspiration. Do you want to expose your brand to a highly targeted list of automotive enthusiasts in a very unique in very personal way, well, I can help you. Contact me, Mark Green, at mark at carsyad.com or through the website at carsyad.com today to learn more. All right, I'll put some ad spots in here. <clears throat> okay. All right, Frank, let's talk about a huge obstacle, big challenge, even a big failure, something that you just hit the wall, fell down, whatever it might be. But more importantly, what did it teach you so you could move forward in a positive way? Well, Mark, as embarrassing it is to admit, I've failed. Well, we've all failed a number of times, but I failed a number of times at the same thing, which was extremely embarrassing. But I finally learned I've got a 1967 Dodge Coronet that is one of my favorite cars that I've done a few years ago. And I have a sticky note posted underneath my keys that says hood pins because mm. I forgot a number of times when I would take that car out for rides after finishing doing something on it or under the hood to lock the hood pins down. And I never bothered to put the safety catch latch Uh under the hood. Uh The most recent failure. Yeah. So three hoods later, the first time I had fin, I had just finished painting the car. I saw I painted it with my uncle at his house around the corner from my mom's when I was kind of in between my active duty time in the army and then moving up state. I drove the car around the corner without the hood pins on because I just was excited and forgot, showed it off to my family, spun it around the corner and probably got up to maybe 35, 40. And right about there, the wind just turns it into a perfect sail and yeah. up it went. And there went hood number one. And over the next year and a half, I did it two more times. Oh, and gosh, so I, that's got to hurt. Oh, yes, it, oh. it sucked. Um, each time a little bit worse and worse. Luckily, I never broke the windshield, but the, the final time it, it crashed down on the fender it broke the hood hinge on the driver's side and like totally buckled it so uh it's pretty fun to watch go up in the air so yeah oh man i feel for you buddy i i almost did the same thing i had a 66 gt350 shelby mustang that had hood pins and no latch and uh forgot one time i was at a car show and i you know and forgot and i started to pull out and drive and thank goodness Cause it wasn't far before there was a freeway on ramp and I would have punched it. Like I always did in that car. And this guy at the car show jumped in front of me and said, your hood pins are out. And I'm just like, Oh my gosh, you saved me. Yeah. He did. Yeah. It's easy to forget that. You know, when you're in a, whatever situation you're excited or whatever, Oh, I feel so bad for you that, well, you'll never do that again. You know, I keep my cars on battery tenders here at home. And I found this cool little thing at an airplane shop that says remove before flight. Yeah. And I put it on my steering wheel. Every time I get out of the car before I plug it in to that battery tender. And that just is that reminder because you just get busy. You forget there's so much going on. So, uh, yeah, Mm -hmm. that's a little tip for you. Oh, I feel so sad. That's terrible. Well, I'll bet you never do that again, as they say. I hope not, but you know what? It made me better paint. It made, made me a better painter each time I had to repaint the hood. So <laughs> maybe subliminally you were experimenting or you were testing yourself to get better and better. That was the way you could practice. But there are less expensive ways to do that. Oh, yeah. I, guess yeah, I don't mean to laugh at you uh, by no means. So no, all right, I laughed. My- oh gosh. Well, let's talk about a bucket list. I would assume. I mean, you're a young guy. You still got a lot of life ahead of you. A lot of career ahead of you. Is there some big, hairy, audacious thing you'd like to achieve in your life, in your career? Absolutely. There's a number of things I want to achieve and probably things I don't even realize at the moment. But one of the things in the near term I really would like to achieve is I bought this really cool 1965 Dodge D500 flatbed truck called Big Bob. So this truck, it it has, I forget how many miles, maybe 30, 40,000 original miles on it. It's originally actually from your hometown right now, Washington State. It was used as an apple tree hauler. It then served its time over in 
Grafton, Ohio, where I brought it from. So I left uh, my annual training a couple of years ago from the Army Reserves, leaving Fort Benning, Georgia, and I saw it on Craigslist. And I changed my flight from landing in New York to have me fly right into Ohio. I was like, I got to buy this truck. I've wanted a cool old Dodge truck to turn into a flatbed and make it into a car hauler. So I was like, this is it. So I flew in, sight unseen, and this guy was still kind of like playing it off like the truck was ready to go. And I was going to drive this farm truck that hasn't seen highway miles ever six hours or what should be six hours to New York. Oh, my. And by the time he picked me up from the airport, he kind of was like, well, the brakes aren't actually working too good at the moment. But And I was like getting a little frustrated. So I wound up going back with him to his buddy's mechanic shop and helping bleed the brakes and getting the truck drivable to get it on the road. Yeah. And then I went to the DMV with him, got it on the road, drove it back home. And uh, well, I'm kind of leading into a whole big story there. But either way, <laughs> you made that it. Truck, <laughs> That, yeah, it, it was a heck of a trip. And that truck, I would like to actually, you know, complete and get the bed done, my money, or if budget allows, I would love to put a really legitimate flatbed on it and have some hydraulics and turn into just a big, cool ramp truck. And either way, just I want to, that is what I would like to drive around the country with and use as my car hauler for buying projects, yeah. for going to car shows, stuff like that. And, you know, me and my girlfriend, Alex, could just tour around and pick up cool cars and so, yeah, that's a certain bucket list item for me for sure. That sounds cool. I love it. Can't wait to see that one done. Well, my next well, question has to do about a special vehicle, some special vehicle in your life. Could be the first one, could be one you have now, or maybe one that's coming. Love for you to share a story about what that is. Yeah, uh, it's hard to pick from one, but I would have to say the the most special vehicle to me is my 1966 Buick Wildcat. Um, I've had that car since I was 17 so that would have been 2007 when I was in high school. My father found it for sale in the local newspaper. And this is before like the Internet was too big or anything. So he just saw a little little ad in the back. He knew how big I was into cars and went and checked it out for me after work one day and then came back and told me about it. We went and looked at it and I fell in love with the car. It's an all original interior, once repainted white exterior Buick Wildcat two door with a 401 nail head had 58,000 miles on it at the time original it's a really cool kind of preserved original car and I just loved it so we bought the car together I paid the majority of it with money I had saved up from like cutting lawns and stuff in high school and he kind of finished the rest and didn't tell my mom that he kind of hooked me up for the rest of it but uh that car I've had ever since it's the car that I've owned the longest and my father is no longer with us so it's just something I could never let go of that car. It just means the world to me to have it because we we found it together. And uh, I've driven it all around the country, too. So I've driven it from New York to North Carolina, from North Carolina back to Long Island, from Long Island up to Rochester, New York. And then all the way from Rochester, New York, my girlfriend flew with me this summer and we drove it all the way from my house in Rochester to our place out here in Utah across country. So it, it's been all around. It's just it's a cool car that just you crank it up and it just goes. And yeah, I could never part with that car. You know, great memories too. And I love that car. The, the way the front end angles, the headlights where they're sitting in that car kind of angle back and then the nose comes out at a point. It's got these very angular cut mm. cuts to the car. And then if I remember right, yeah. doesn't that have like a cool kind of, maybe it's a fake vent right behind the front tires. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Is that a real vent opening or is that one of those add-on kind of like they did in Detroit where it looked like a vent of some kind? No, it, it is a chrome add-on that it's got, at least on mine, it's a simulated triple vent yeah. that's chromed up behind the wheel on the fender you're right yeah yeah no those are those are pretty cool and i love the the b pillar non-existent b pillar when the windows are all down so you've got a yeah. big sweeping back and it's got a long back end on it that back trunk is just cool so a couple of, sure yeah yeah i love it well and great memories with your father uh and the time that you got to have with him in that car yeah you can never let that go Plus, who doesn't love the name Wildcat? I mean, <laughs> you got to love that. That's very cool. Thank you. Well, I'm going to get into your head a little bit here, Frank. If you woke up tomorrow and you were manifest as a vehicle, not what you want to be, but your personality in a vehicle, what would you be? And more importantly, why? That's a very interesting question. <laughs> That's a dangerous question to ask me because I don't give just a, a simple answer either. I'm, I guess leading into that answer, I'm a very complex person i guess even uh -huh. though i'm simple i feel like at times i also think i'm pretty complex so maybe i'd be some kind of 
hybrid muscle car with all these wild options where you can kind of switch out engines and and wheels and tires and you know press a couple of buttons and the next thing you know i'm i'm doing this i'm doing that because i feel like i've got a lot of abilities and skills and i'm good at a lot of things so maybe if i was a car i'd, I'd have i'd still want to be a muscle car let's don't, let's not get that wrong but maybe i'd have a bunch of really cool hidden buttons because i still like the old school classic look i don't want to see that modern buttons and everything but i'd have the versatility to do a bunch of different roads different conditions different speeds i, I guess like that would yeah I, i'm gonna call you a transformer muscle car i can dig that yeah you like that <laughs> I think that works. Yeah, that, that kind of makes sense. That That is a unique question. Yeah, most of my guests have never been asked that question. I don't think anybody has ever been asked that question. So uh, nice, cool. nicely answered. Are there some ways that in your life right now that you're giving back to others to help them? Yeah, for sure. I do a number of things through, well, I guess just to say, my prior job when I was, so before I got this job here out in Salt Lake, I was teaching Army ROTC at a college and I would do kind of after hours, I would teach like a car, car maintenance, a car familiarity class to the Army RTC cadets that I was training. Because a lot of young people today have no idea how to jump a car, how to change a, a tire. Your most common roadside situations occur. A lot of people have no idea what to do. So just to kind of teach them how to safely jack up a car, how to check their fluids, just uh, your simple maintenance stuff, like to most of us and probably the listeners might understand, a lot of people don't. So I was doing those classes, which is a lot of fun. And just even before then, and still now I, I do a lot of engagement on Instagram and YouTube, just because I love working on cars. And I get so many people that message me. And it's funny to say the word like younger people, because I still think of myself as 18. <laughs> I'll I, get, get, I do too sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And they'll be like, Hey, I just, I'm 16 years old. I'm looking to buy my first Camaro because I've watched your video about the one that you built and, and you've inspired me to do this and that. And I'll answer I'll try to answer like as many questions as I can to try and help people with anything that I know. Cause I feel like that's the same thing that people have done for me is, you know, we're all a community in the car world. And even though it's, it's small, it's still big at the same time. And anything that I can do to answer questions and whether it's off of videos or posts I make or anything, it's, I don't know. I try to look at it as almost like a, a self-help corner where I can help people out with anything that I know. And it's, it's really it's extremely rewarding to see the feedback I get from people on things that I've done and things that they're working on too. And to hear that I've like helped them or inspired them in some way, it, it's super cool. So I feel like the way I give back. It's an awesome thing you're doing. And of course you've given back to this country and the people of this country by serving in the army. And I want to thank you again for that. That means the world to me, uh, having family who have been veterans, our veterans uh, in the military. So I want to thank you for that. That's a huge sacrifice. You and all of the people in this country that serve and their families that support that as well. That's a lot of times the families are forgotten, uh, but they have to sacrifice too. So uh, thank you very, very much for what you're doing. How about a book? Is there a book that you've read you'd like to share? You know, I'm kind of guilty on this one because I, even as an army officer, as much as it's bad to admit, they would always want us to read books too for our professional development. I, I am not good when it comes to reading. I, I've read books in the past, but I honestly, I couldn't say that I've read one in a long time. I guess when I think back, one of my one of the books I always loved, it was it was called Lizard Music. I think it's from like the 60s or 70s. It was one of my mom's favorite books and it was kind of a, a fantasy, you know, fictional book, but honestly, it's been so long since I read it, but I remember that book always resonating with me. It was just I don't know, it kind of opened my mind a little bit when I was a kid and then a book I also really enjoyed I read in college on my own was it's about the War of 1812. I'm I'm really big into American history and war history. So it was it was really cool reading about wartime in New York City and Manhattan and kind of what led to actually no, it was sorry, it wasn't eighteen twelve. The book was seventeen seventy six and it talked about the island of Manhattan and how the Dutch basically kind of tricked the Native Americans into purchasing part of the land and then just kind of implementing how New York State and New York City fed into the wars. And for me that's cool because Growing up there, it's it's cool to be able to go to New York City and then imagine for a second, like a couple hundred years ago, there were people fighting here, doing this and that, and there were Native Americans and there were colonial people. You know, just I don't know. I, I think it's it's cool to 
transplant or transport yourself into time for a second and to imagine when you're standing somewhere. That kind of goes with lizard music because my understanding of that book, it's by Daniel Pinkwater. It's a little bit of Home Alone. When you think of the movie, I think there's a little kid named Victor who goes on his own at-home vacation. Is that the way you remember yeah. that? And he gets to uh, watch yeah. TV and do whatever he wants. I mean, it's kind of every kid's little dream if their parents let him stay up late and, and all these things. So all these strange things start to happen to him. The band of lizards appears. So yeah, that's uh, lizard music. You're the first one to recommend that on this show. But yeah, check it out. Might be good for a little kid to uh, get him or her reading. You know, the one thing I always suggest to people, if you don't have time to read or you're just not a reader, is audiobooks. They're a wonderful way to get to experience books. And my lizards, my lizards, <laughs> my <laughs> listeners, <laughs> my lizards, my listeners know this. My wife taught me this, is if you get a library card, you can get free audiobooks sent right to your tablet. You don't even have to go to the library. Yeah, for free. And if they don't have the book you want, they'll get it for you. Uh, all your taxes are already paying for the library, so use them. It's an incredibly underutilized resource. And when I share it with people, most people have no idea that that's possible. So check it out. Oh, cool. We'll take another short break here, Frank. When we come back, we're going to talk about what I call the ultimate drive. So keep your seatbelt on. Here at Cars Yeah, it's all about inspiration. And our charity of choice is Tech Force Foundation, where it's all about making a positive difference in young people's lives. Tech Force helps young adults discover their talents and passions for all things automotive, with a mission of helping students develop a career as a professional technician. Tech Force awards nearly $2 million in scholarships every year for students to pursue technical education and they support hands-on activities, events, and mentorships across the country, working to change the outdated perceptions of these careers. Autotechs are in high demand, but the supply of qualified technicians is critically short. They need your help to fuel their mission. Learn more and join me in supporting them at techforce.org. Hey, fellow inspiring automotive enthusiasts, did you know if you subscribe at carsdad.com, I'll send you my free filler up book. It's an ebook filled with fuel filler fun and inspirational quotes from past guests here on Cars Yeah. Plus, you'll get a weekly wrap up email from me every Friday, and your name will be in the hat for one of the many free giveaways here at Cars Yeah. Simply go to carsyeah.com and click on the free book button, and boom, you're in the club. And don't forget to subscribe to Cars Yeah on your mobile podcast app, and you'll get the Cars Yeah show delivered right to your mobile device every day, absolutely free. Inspiring automotive enthusiasts, that's what we're all about. Here at Cars, yeah. Thanks for listening. All right. I have a magic scepter. Joan, a past guest here, will know what I'm talking about. And I can arrange for you to go on the ultimate drive. But you get to pick some things. You get to pick the car, the person you're with. Could be anybody living or deceased. And I want to know who's driving and what are you going to talk about? So as I wave the scepter, let's go on this great adventure. All right. This is a this is a pretty awesome drive we're looking at right now. So what we're getting into right now is my 1970 Dodge Super B, which at the moment I have not completed yet. I actually haven't started working on this car. My father built me a model of a 70 Super B when I was a kid, and I always thought it was the coolest thing. And I had it on my shelf forever. And then a few years ago, I found one in New York and bought the car. It's a original four speed car. It doesn't have the drivetrain or anything in it, but it's it's a, a yellow Super B with the black stripes on it. And it's just it's a cool car. And that's been like a dream car for me. So that thing in this situation, on this ultimate drive, I've already completed that car now. It's, you know, I'm slamming gears in it. We're having fun. It's a street machine and we're going for a ride. And I would love to take my girlfriend, Alex, and then in the back seat, both of our fathers and drive across country and, uh, Sorry, I'm getting a little emotional. That's, I understand. You know that I lost my dad about four years ago. I, I understand 100%. But, you know, it's cool. And the great thing about this question is you get to think about what what would you ask him? And now, has Alex, does she still have her father or has she lost her father too? No, actually, she lost her father too. And, oh, uh, gosh. Wow. This, reason... is, this is a special ride then. It's a really special ride. Yeah. Yeah. It is because yeah. it's kind of a 
a way that we actually met each other. We started talking because we both shared that connection and that we both had lost our fathers. Oh, and wow. her her dad was super big into building muscle cars and, and worked cars his whole life. And though my father didn't build them, he always had really nice cars and loved you know, working on them and detailing them at home. So cars is just always huge for both of our families. And, yeah. you know, so it, it would just be... It'd be an be epic a, ride. I know that. It would. Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> well, I wish that Magic Scepter could be really, really magic and make that really happen. But, oh, well, you and Alex, no doubt, are going to have some wonderful adventures together. You already have. And while you're doing those, you can talk about your fathers and share more about them. And the fact that you both had fathers that gave you this passion, and that's where I got my passion for cars, was from my father. I started with a 49 MGTC when I was just six years old. So maybe that's why I like European sports cars versus American muscle cars. But uh, I think it's tremendous. So yeah, that's a wonderful, wonderful thought and an awesome ride. The Dodge Super B, what a cool car too. I mean, just, yeah. I like it. You painted Thank a nice, you. yeah, you painted us a really nice picture for us. Well, you've given us a really awesome ride here today, Frank, and, and I can't thank you enough for sharing your life and it's incredible opportunities you've taken advantage of here and you're living the dream. It's so cool. Before I let you go, before you and Alex drive off in the sunset in that Super B with your dads, could you share one little parting piece of wisdom or guidance for our listeners out there? Yeah, for sure. As kind of simple as it is, something, a mantra, I guess, that I always have in my head that I kind of picked up while I was in the Army is just always just wanting to be a valued member of the team with mm-hmm. whatever I'm doing, even if it's by myself. Like it, There are people in this world that just are happy with just kind of doing the minimum and just kind of floating through life. And then there are people that are ambitious and want to learn and want to do stuff. And I just always try... You know, every day isn't perfect, and some days you might have a little bit more energy than others, but every day I'm looking to to learn something, to improve my skills, and to, to be that valued member of the team, to add value to what I'm doing and to the, the organization or the person I'm working with. And, you know, that, that carries me through with what I do. I just want to contribute, you know, instead of just, like, not holding things back, actually pushing things forward. So that awesome. that mentality and that that's what kind of drives me is just to always be adding to what I'm doing and getting better. Well, that's why you're successful. That's why you will continue to be successful because you've figured out the secret sauce to life. And I know because I've talked to 1,795 people here and it's a repeated message of people who've learned how to be happy. And that is be a valued member of a team and give back. So you figured it out, Frank, at a pretty young age. And I think that's really cool. What are the many ways people can learn more about you and follow along with what you're doing? I know you have a YouTube page, right? Yeah, I do. I've got a, I've got a YouTube channel. If you were to search Finelli Restorations, uh, you'd find me there. And I post there. I try to post there regularly, but I, I'm so busy usually with work and actually working on my own stuff. I, I haven't dedicated enough time to making as many videos as I want. But where I'm very active and regularly posting and sharing and interacting with people is on my Instagram just because it's a lot easier to you know post something quick on my phone after work or whatever. And on Instagram, you can find me at F Finelli 66 so it'd be F F A N E L L I 66 and or search Finelli restorations either one and you know it's just kind of the name that I came up for myself when I was starting out you know it's it's just me working on my own cars and whatever but yeah, yeah Finelli restorations if you you look me up there on Instagram or YouTube I'm always kind of sharing what I'm doing and it's just a great way that I met so many people and you know it's really changed my life being able to connect to people in the car community that way. And I look forward to everyone that I meet. It's, it's flattering to me that I even have one person that follows me. <laughs> me too. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm yeah, the same it, way. It's cool when people reach out. Well, I'll make sure I put links to how you listeners can follow Frank. I encourage you to do that. And of course, we'll also put a tie into Kandiga Design, Dave's Place. I mean, got to follow those guys as well. But I would encourage you to tap in on Frank and see what he's doing. And I want to do a shout out to Tori de Blasi. He introduced me to Frank. He introduces me to some very cool people that I probably maybe would never find. So Tori, you're a superstar for paying it forward, sharing. Awesome thing to do. Frank, thank you, my friend, for being so generous today with your time, your expertise, and your passion, sharing your life with us today. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. Thanks, Mark. It's great talking to you. You're welcome. 
Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.